dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, hearty welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter season. As you know, we are moving towards the close of this Easter season. Next Sunday, we have the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord, followed by the following Sunday, the Feast of Pentecost. Now, today's reflection will be focused on the main theme based on the gospel reading as well as the letter of St. John. And that theme is divine love. Now, so much is spoken about and written about and depicted in various areas like films, uh, paintings, and so many places. And also in the conversations, love is very much in use. However, the understanding of love or perception of love is of different types. So much misused, misunderstood, and misinterpreted is the term love. Because there are two types of love. One is called the bad or wrong type of love. The other one is good or right type of love. Now, what is the bad type of love? It is deceptive, destructive, and leading to damnation. It has the appearance of love, but they are not really love. St. Francis de Sales uses the example of honey of Heraclea. You know, honey is good as a medicine, as an energizer, a good food. However, the honey of Heraclea looks like good honey, but those who take, they experience the giddiness, and even they die because there is a poisonous element in that honey. Similarly, the wrong type of love, evil love, can lead us astray and deceive and lead to damnation. Now, good type of love. There are three different types we can see in the good type of love. One is called natural love. Natural love is the love with which we are born and then it is come automatically, part of our nature, we call it. Some people have more, some people have less. It is natural. The second type of love is called is a moral virtue. We practice by our effort, discipline, and this kind of love, this both a natural and a moral virtue, they are helpful for a harmonious and peaceful living in this world. They are good. They are beneficial. They are advantages. They are, they are necessary for a happy life here on earth. However, the third type of love is what we call supernatural love. And we will be focusing on the third type of love, supernatural love. Now, first of all, the difference between this supernatural love and the other two types of love is that though natural love and moral virtue of love is good and uh, helpful for a harmonious and peaceful life on earth, they cannot take us to God. They cannot give us eternal life. It is supernatural love alone can divinize us, take us to God. Because it is coming from God. That is why you call it in the theological terms, theological virtue, infused by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So it is this love Jesus is speaking about in the gospel. This love comes from God, originates from God. And it is given to us. And this love leads us on our journey to God. So beginning, origin of love, divine love is God. And the goal of this love or end of this love is again God. This love unites us, makes us one with God. Now, the other love, they are not capable of leading us to God. That is why we see supernatural love. And it is this love we find in the Trinity. The love that exists in God, that complete giving of self and sharing a unity, oneness, all these come from. So Trinity is love. That is why St. John boldly says, God is love. It is this love. The Father gives everything to the Son. And the Son gives everything. So the love between Father and mutual, uh, unconditional, perfect. And this is what Jesus says, uh, love one another as I have loved you. And uh, he says, 
So Jesus wants us to love or practice divine love as Jesus loved his father and father loved his son and Jesus loved us. And Jesus is the incarnation of that divine love. And Jesus expressed the, the climax of his love is incarnation and redemption. He's dying on the cross. So the characteristic of this love is that it gives eternal life, it divinizes us, it transforms us, it makes us like God. And this is the kind of love. It's a self-giving, self-sacrificing. That is the divine love. And when do we get it? How can we practice it? How can we grow it? What are challenges in this life? Now we know when we are baptized, our faith tells us this love is infused into our hearts. So through baptism, God infuses this love in our heart. And thus we are made or divinized. We are made brothers and sisters of Jesus. We are made one with God. So that is the beginning. And then it is our responsibility to nurture this love, grow in this love, live in this love, and become witness of this love, and share this love with one another. That is what Jesus did. Love one another as I have loved. Uh, so you see, Jesus uh, tells us that to prove this love, the newness of this love is seen by the way we keep the commandments Jesus gave us. And he gives the example, just as I kept the commandments of God. That means he did the will of God. He did what our God wants. So his life was in full conformity with the plan of God, will of God, he spoke what Father wanted to say. He did what God wanted, Father wanted to uh, do. So everything, there is a perfect conformity and unity and oneness. And this is what Jesus wants us also. Love one another as I have loved. So Jesus loved us in the same way, giving himself totally for us. His life, even the last moment of pouring out his blood and water, what was left. So total giving, self-giving. And that is the divine love. And divine love is not only possessive or self-seeking, but self-giving. And Jesus gave himself to us as a perfect expression of his love. He invites us to practice this kind of love in our day-to-day -day life. You know, the early Christians were trying to live this love, life of love. So much so, they were witness in such a way, the others used to look at them and admire them. Look at the Christians, how they love one another. Now, can we say today, the people looking at, will they say, look at the Christians, how they love one another? Perhaps they may say the opposite, how they fight each other or how they hate each other. So it is this lack of love that brings war, discrimination, hatred, jealousy, all kinds of problems. Because you see, this divine love alone can elevate us, unite us with the God and with one another. Also, we have to understand, when God infuses this love, God also provides ways and means to grow in this love, the sacraments and what we do, good things, even the small things we do, it helps us, good things, helps us to grow in this love. So we have to grow in this love till death, because there is no end of growth in this life. Also, there is a danger, this love can be lost. There are so many enemies try to destroy this love. But we have to resist all that evil tendencies, temptations, all those things. And it's a challenge. So we have to, with the grace of God, he helps us, he assists us in different ways. So we have to grow constantly in this love. We have to bear witness this love. We have to proclaim this love. Also, we should understand, when we have this divine love in us, it influences, I mentioned in the beginning, um, moral virtue of love as well as natural love. When the divine love is present, it influences moral virtue of love as well as natural love, and they work together, and it assists us. So that is what, so moral virtue as well as natural virtue, is, they are good. And in the presence of love, they elevate, uh, they have greater value and worth and dignity. So what is important for us to to serve or persevere in that love and grow in this love. Also, Jesus tells us, abide in my love. Abide in my love. Just as I was abiding 
in the Father's love. What does it mean? So when we speak of love, it is not merely an action or a, a deed of love, act of love. It is much more than that. It is more a state of love, that is state of being one with God. Just as Jesus was found constantly united with the Father because of love. And that love was effective. St. Francis still says, this love is practiced in two ways. By contemplation, becoming union, one with God. And by doing Father's will, doing the will of God. It's exactly what Jesus is telling. Just not those who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but who does the will of God. So they are complementary. So both these aspects, he uses the example of both hands. Uh, they work together. Similarly, our love, that is affective love, he calls affective love and effective love. So this is what, so we are called to abide in this love because already infused in our hearts and we should never allow this love be lost. So grow in love. So once again, what we have to understand is that uh, we all received this love God has given each one of us, baptized person, this love. So we are invited today to abide in this love, to practice this love, share with others, and become witnesses. We have the examples of so many saints uh, who practiced uh, this selfless love, self-living love. So we have to be witness in this world, and we have overcome all the evils by our love. He said, it's an antidote for all the evils. So let us uh, learn more about this. Uh, just to mention one more point, that is, uh, you know, the first encyclical Pope, Benedict XVI, wrote to us, Deus Caritas. He explains very clearly about this love. Uh, well, there's no time to explain it. Otherwise, uh, I could link with uh, the concept of how Francis speaks about uh, how the erotic love can be made uh, good love or Agape, they call in Latin, agape, or Greek agape. So I don't want to go in details, but let us once again think that he invites us to live this love and we should be messengers of this love. So let us ask Jesus to give us that Holy Spirit, the spirit of love who infused the divine love in our hearts, help us to resist all the temptations against this love and we may practice the pure love, divine love, and become messengers and witnesses of this love in this world. Thank you. May God bless you.